Hi there, I'm Tucker. Me and my human travel all the time, and together we've gathered a lot of pet plane traveling tips we'd like to share with you today. Now, I may be a dog, but my human always makes sure I have my own suitcase. It includes my health certificates and medical records and all my human's contact information. These are all in a pocket that's easily reachable, so we can provide them to the airport personnel if necessary. We always make sure I have all my food in bowls, as well as all my grooming tools and products. That includes my brush, some pet wipes, my leash, and bags for when I need to use the doggy restroom. I once lost my collar on a hike, so we never forget to bring a spare collar with my ID tag. Now, if we're going on a longer journey, I always bring my favorite toy and a blanket. It keeps me calm and comforted in each new location we visit. My human always makes sure to bring a list of dog-friendly restaurants and attractions. I always like to know my itinerary before I travel, otherwise I get a bit fussy. Airlines only let a limited number of pets on each flight, so my human always books me early. That's because some airlines have requirements that can take months to prepare. Now, I'm a Labrador, so there are no restrictions for me to fly on most airlines. But some cat and dog breeds aren't allowed to board planes because they're a bit more sensitive. Some short-nosed breeds, like the Boston Terriers, Boxers, and Pit Bulls, can't travel in the cargo hold because they may be prone to respiratory problems. But they may be able to travel with you in the cabin if they fit the size requirements. I'll most likely be separated from my human on board the plane, so he needed to get me a special crate approved by most airlines. It's large enough for me to stand, sit, and turn around. It's also lined with an absorbent bedding, just in case I get too nervous on board. Now, if your pup hasn't traveled in a crate before, do buy it in advance and let it get used to the new environment. With proper training, we'll actually enjoy staying in the kennel. We'll see it as a safe, comfortable place we actually like to hang out in. The easiest way is to just feed the dog in the kennel a few weeks in advance leading up to the flight day. Adding a comfortable bed in there and the dog's favorite toy is also something us pets like a lot. If our flight has a layover, we always pack a bit of dry food for me to enjoy in case I need a snack between the trips. The airline personnel will be nice enough to help me with it. Now, me and my human came up with this neat trick in case I get thirsty too. We freeze my filled water dish the night before. This way, it doesn't spill during loading and will melt by the time I'm thirsty. My human always makes sure that my crate door is closed but not locked, so the airline people can open it in case there's an emergency. My crate is filled with ways to identify me, too. It has the words live animal written all over and my owner's name, cell phone, and destination phone number are also provided. We've even stuck a nice photo of me on the crate, just in case I get lost. They'll know where to return me and how to contact my human. Oh, did I mention I'm half cyborg? <laughs> Don't want to brag or anything, but my human did provide me with a microchip that may come in handy in case I get lost. It has all my information, like health records and ways to contact my human. Most airports and vet offices have special tools to scan it. Now, I really don't like this tip, but I get it, it's for our safety, blah blah blah. You shouldn't fill the pet's crate with a lot of toys. If the crate is too full, it makes it difficult for us to move around and adjust our position. Now, flying with a cat or a dog may make you eligible for early boarding. Ask beforehand if that's a possibility. Getting us settled before the flight can take some time, and those extra minutes can help both of us remain calm. Now, my human makes sure to tell every airline employee he sees, on the ground and in the air, that he's traveling with me. This way, they'll know if I need any special attention. I remember one time our plane got delayed, so my human made sure the airline personnel checked on me whenever they could. Really don't like this one either, but it's best to feed us pets a bit less before the flight. Some of us get airsick too, so keeping our tummy empty for a bit might help. Just skip the last meal you would normally feed us before beginning your journey. You know how it's best to go to the bathroom before boarding a plane? We need it too. So go look for a pet relief area in your local airport. Most of them should have one. 
Some smaller dogs, generally under 20 pounds, may be able to travel in the cabin with you. That's only if they're well-behaved and properly groomed. Always remember that most airlines will be able to refuse to board your pet at any time if the animal doesn't comply with the regulations. Also, keep in mind that the dog carrier you bring into the cabin will likely count as a piece of carry-on luggage. All throughout the flight, your pet needs to be safely placed under the seat in front of you. There will be no potty or cuddle breaks. Us dogs need to be in the crate at all times. Now, not all people like pets. I can't imagine why. And some may also be allergic, so it's best to keep us as contained as possible. Do talk to us to calm us down if we become nervous. We always like to hear your voice. Us pets really don't like to be away from our humans for long, especially in a new location. So please book a non-stop direct flight if you can. Fewer stops mean less stress for us too. You can also pick a weekday flight. Airports tend to be a lot less noisy on weekdays. If we can't go with you in the cabin and have to travel in the cargo hold, it's best to fly in the morning or evening during the summer and midday during the winter to avoid extremely hot or cold temperatures. Okay, I'm on the plane now, all safe in my kennel, with my water, toy, and some treats. But where am I exactly? Me and my human looked that up too. I'm in a place called the forward cargo hold of the plane. It's located beneath the cabin where the human passengers sit. The reason why we travel in this specific area of the plane is because it's temperature controlled and pressurized. We also don't travel with standard baggage because of the potential hazard risk. Now, in case you're wondering how much all of this is going to cost, the short answer is it depends on your pet. Prices vary depending on the transportation manner, the airline, and also the breed of the animal. You can expect to pay anywhere between 75 to 125 bucks each way for pets traveling inside the cabin. Some $200 are needed for pets that are in cargo. Very large dogs, however, can cost up to $2,000 since they do take up a lot of space. Once you get to your destination, go straight to the airline's specified cargo location. Us dogs are available about two hours after the flight's arrival, and we must be picked up within four hours. Otherwise, we'll be taken to a vet or boarding facility. So please hurry! Take us for a walk right away. We need a bit of a stretch, too. That pet relief area in the airport will also be a nice place to take us to. Oh, and don't forget the mandatory head pats and belly rubs. <laughs> yeah, right there. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.